I'm guessing you're here because your dog got sprayed by a skunk? Well, time's a wasting. So first off, let me preface this by stating I've been a dog groomer for 15 years, so I've had the unfortunate experience of personally having to de-skunk a dog. And not just a dog, I've had to do cats too. But cat or dog, it doesn't matter because I'm gonna give you the tried and true method for getting the stink out no matter the species. Step one is super important. Please don't skip it. You need to assess your pet. Things that you're gonna look out for is drooling, red eyes, vomiting, and even some swelling, particularly around the eyes. Unfortunately, they like to aim at the face. If your dog has any of those symptoms, you're going to head right to the vet because they might need some extra help. Otherwise, if your pet is fine, but just super smelly, let's get into how you can get this whole thing under control. First off, if possible, do not let your pet into the house. Anything that they touch will turn into an absolute stinky dumpster fire. I'm not exaggerating here. And it can be extremely difficult to get out. So if you can avoid this, just fade them outside with a hose if possible, but hang on, actually don't get them wet. Let's start there because this is going to be important whether you're bringing them inside into the bathtub or if you can get the job done outside. Just please, for the love of all things that are holy, do not put any water on your dog to start. And the reason for this is that skunk spray is made up of a lot of different stuff, but the real problem in it is the oil. It actually sticks to your dog's skin proteins, kind of like glue. And you know how water and oil refuse to play nice? Yeah. That's why washing off skunk spray is a real pain in the f And the kicker is that the smell just keeps coming back stronger whenever your dog gets wet. So as backwards as it might sound for now, please just keep your dog dry. Also, if you did have to carry in your dog or touch them for whatever reason, I will give you a tip for the cleanup of your house and your clothes at the end. But we'll circle back since right now we're dealing with problem numero uno and that is your dog. Okay, so I feel like I need to say this, but do not put mm. tomato juice on your dog. It doesn't work and it's just gonna make them wet. And as we know, that's a problem in of itself. Also, there's zero point in using a regular pet shampoo. I'm talking about your normal everyday stuff, so skip that for now as well. So obviously, if you have a de-skunking pet shampoo, this is going to be your best bet, but most of the time, we're usually unprepared for a visit from Pepe Le Pew. Skunks are nocturnal and usually they tend to strike at night because of this. And usually this is when the hours that the pet store is closed. So hence why you're probably on YouTube right now trying to figure out this problem. But don't worry, I've got you covered. I've got a couple of recipes to help you out, most of which you probably do already have on hand. And if not, we can circle back to the shampoo, but we're getting through this one way or another. So recipe number one involves hydrogen peroxide. I know it might sound crazy, but trust me, it works. And we will go over the safety aspects to make sure you're fully prepared. What else you need is dish soap, like Dawn or palm olive, one of those types, and baking soda. Here's the mixture. You're gonna mix three to four parts of the 3% hydrogen peroxide to one part baking soda with a teaspoon of the dish soap. If you have rubber gloves, pop them on now because you're gonna wanna use them before you start scrubbing because your hands are gonna smell otherwise. So while the mixture is bubbling, apply it to a dry coat. And I can't stress this enough, do not wet your pet before putting on the mixture. We already talked about this, but I feel like some of you might need to be repeated that fact. So rub it all over your dry dog on areas that they've been sprayed, probably likely the front end, but if you're not overly sure, you can actually apply it to the whole dog, but you're gonna need to work fast because peroxide can lighten, particularly dark coats like blacks and browns. And I'm guessing you probably don't want them to end up looking like 90s m and You know what I'm talking about. Make sure you're scrubbing them really well down to the skin, particularly if they're fluffy, and also avoid the eye area. As you can imagine, it will burn if it gets in their eye. Be careful around their mouths as well. They do sometimes like to lick, so keep that in mind. Just please use overall caution when working with the solution. Once it's applied, you can rinse it off as normal after about a 20 minute contact period, and then I would go in with a secondary shampoo. So if you do have a regular everyday dog shampoo, this would be a great time to pull it out. And if you do not have dog shampoo in your house at all, well, in a crunch, you can use dish soap. At the very least, it will clean off any of the remaining residue. So 
not something I recommend to use on a daily basis, but in a situation like this, you're gonna want a secondary bath, as I said, to rinse anything off, so dish soap will work just fine. Now, if you happen to have conditioner, that would be recommended if possible as well, since obviously these whole steps are gonna be very drying on their skin, as you can imagine, so just if you have any on hand, it'd be a great time to use it as well. Let's get into recipe two, just as a backup in case you don't have the first set of ingredients. If you have some vinegar on hand, apple cider or otherwise, it could be white, doesn't matter. The mixture is two parts water to one part vinegar. Just as we said earlier, apply this to a dry coat as well. Although the mixture is wet, so it won't be as effective or easy to spread around as the first one, but desperate times call for desperate measures. Same as before, scrub it in really well and let it sit for about 20 minutes and then hose them down and give them a normal bath with shampoo and conditioner. As I said before, if you do not have those, dish soap is fine as well. Same idea, just to remove any remaining residue. Quickly, let's talk about the best de-skunking shampoos that you can buy, and then I'll get into the cleanup process. Okay, so if you're using an actual de-skunking shampoo, same as what we went through before, apply the shampoo directly to a dry coat. Do not wet them down. So no matter what kind you have, this step is gonna make the biggest difference in the actual effectiveness of the product. As I said, scrub it in really well and then read your label for general use. It might tell you how long they recommend letting it sit, but generally speaking, it's probably anywhere from about five minutes up to that 20 minute mark. Some of the products that I've used and liked over the years are Knockout Skunk Shampoo, although, I've heard recently they make a spray as well, so that could potentially be easier to actually apply it to your dog, and it might have use outside of your dog as well, such as on different furnitures or clothing as well. And I've found this brand works reasonably well for de-skunking. And I've also used in like Nature's Miracle Skunk Odor Remover as well, so those might be some good brands to look for in the store, but honestly, the hydrogen peroxide formula is hands down the best for odor remover that I have found. Okay, so let's assume you made it out to the other end of this thing and your dog is probably now towel dried and zooming around somewhere in your house, but you're left with stinky clothes and towels that you have to clean up. Well, if you use a de-skunking shampoo or spray, most do have usages for cleanup as well, as I was talking about with the knockout. Shampoos can apply in this situation as well. Some can be used for clothing as well. So just read your labels. But if you have DIY'd the process, feel free to strip down and put your towels and clothes in the washing machine. And you're gonna add about a half a cup of baking soda along with your regular detergent. And it's really likely that you're gonna have to run two cycles on this. Once clean, remove them and hang them to air dry. Using heat on them might actually act as a sealant in a sense for any of the remaining skunk smells to take root deeper into the fabric. And oxygen really helps as well, so along with the cool air and the oxygen, it's really gonna help the process along. Here's potentially another problem you might encounter, is that after the bath, as I said, some dogs like to rub on every surface in your home. So you actually might wanna blow dry them on a cool setting, because the same idea with the heat applies here. But if you need an actual dog blow dryer, I can help you pick a budget-friendly one in this video right here.